Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Tonusri Shahadas Gupta, Professor and Associate Dean in SN Bose National Center for Basic Sciences in Kolkata. I belong to the Department of Condensed Matter Physics and Material Science. I am also the coordinator of the thematic unit of excellence on computational material science set up within SN Bose Center. In previous lectures, we discussed the Hartree and Hartree Fock methods, which are wave function based methods. In this lecture, we will introduce the density based method, while the Hamiltonian corresponding to the quantum mechanical description of many electron systems is easy to write, it is far too difficult to solve. The purely numerical approach is faced with the difficulties involving large number of variables. Lack of easy interpretation and the so called electron electron correlation effect which we introduced in the last lecture also makes the situation difficult. An important class of methods based on variational principle is to minimize the energy using suitable forms of the trial wave function guided by the single electron functions has been discussed in previous lectures in the context of Hartree and Hartree Fock method. An alternative approach would be to use methods based on electronic density. It would cause a huge reduction in the dimension of the problem. It has several other advantages too. First of all, it is a function in three dimensional space in which we live and perceive. Secondly, it is simpler to tabulate and plot. Thirdly, it provides a better visualization. Lastly, it is an experimentally observable quantity. This enables one to compare the calculated results directly with experiments. In order to formulate a density based approach, one needs to assure the following. A, the density contains sufficient information. B, calculation of the properties and the energy is possible from the density alone. And C, it is possible to develop a method for direct calculation of density. The very first attempt in this respect was made by Thomas and Fermi. Thomas who was born in the year 1903 in the month of October was a British physicist and applied mathematician. Enrico Fermi, born in the year 1901, was an Italian physicist who, as you may know, created the world's first nuclear reactor. The approach was proposed independently by Thomas and Fermi in the year 1927, which is semi classical in nature. It is semi classical in the nature in the sense that certain ideas are borrowed from quantum mechanics, but otherwise one operates with normal functions instead of quantum mechanical operators. It was developed shortly after the introduction of the Schrodinger equation. As opposed to the wave function based method, the formulation was done entirely in terms of the electronic density and is viewed as a precursor to the modern density functional theory, which will be the topic of our discussion in the next lecture. In particular, the kinetic energy expression of Thomas Fermi theory is used in more sophisticated modern orbital free density functional theory. Thomas Fermi theory understandably has 
several shortcoming in the sense that oversimplified description of the electron electron interactions was used which was treated classically and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, the Thomas Fermi theory contains all necessary ingredients which paved the way to the modern density functional theory. In the present lecture, we will thus focus on the Thomas Fermi theory for historic reason. With this brief introduction, we now move on to the details of the theory and its formulation. In this lecture, we'll start with quantum mechanical description of many electron systems and discuss the challenges in solving this problem. Following this, we'll discuss the possible approaches, namely, firstly, the numerical solutions. We'll discuss the problems associated with it and then the variational approach using trial wave functions. Having done that, we'll discuss the alternative approach, namely the density-based approach. In particular, we will discuss the following aspects, the reduction to lower dimensionality and use of reduced density metrics. Finally, we'll discuss the Thomas Fermi model. The conventional quantum mechanical description of many electron systems, for example, atoms, molecules, clusters, solid, they all involve solution of Schrodinger equation, which is shown here in the time independent as well as in the time dependent form. The time independent form being given by H psi equal to E psi and the time dependent form being given by H psi equal to I H cut del psi del T. Where the most general form of the Hamiltonian is shown here. The first term is the kinetic energy of the electrons. The second term is the potential created by the ions, the ionic potential. The third term is the potential due to electron-electron repulsion. And finally, the last one arises due to the interaction between a nuclei and another nuclei. We have used here the atomic unit so that the mass of the electron, its charge, etc., has been assumed to be one. However, as stated by Dirac, the underlying physical laws necessary for the mathematical theory of a large part of physics and the whole of chemistry are thus completely known and the difficulty is only that the exact application of these laws lead to equation much too complicated to be solvable. Exact analytical solution is possible for a very few potential even for a single particle or a single electron. One of the possible approach in solving this many electron problem could be the numerical solution. The numerical solution is possible, but the problem is with the large number of variable, which is 3n in case of the n number of electron that is involved in the description of the wave function psi that depends on the coordinates r1 to rn. As mentioned by Hartree, the tabulation of one variable requires a page, of two variables a volume, and of three variables a library. But the full specification of a single wave function of neutral Rn is a function of 78 variables. It would be rather crude to restrict to 10 the number of values or the coordinates at which to tabulate this function. But even so, the full tabulation of it would require 10 to the power 78 entries. And even is, if this number could be reduced somewhat from considerations of symmetry, there would still not be enough atoms in the whole solar system to provide the material for printing such a table. Also, there is 
problems of interpretation. As said by Feynman, the trouble with quantum mechanics is not only in solving the equations, but in understanding what the solutions mean. The major problems in quantum mechanical description of many electron systems thus can be summarized as following. Firstly is the problem of large number of variable. Secondly is the lack of easy interpretation. And finally is the so-called electron-electron correlation which makes this problem unsolvable. Another important approach in solving the many electron problem is the variational approach using trial wave functions. An important class of methods based on variational principle is to minimize the quantity, the energy, which is given by psi times h times psi, the matrix element, and then use the suitable forms of the trial wave function psi guided by the one particle or one electron orbital picture. This would lead to single particle or single electron self-consistent schemes as we have learned in Hartree and Hartree-Fock method which was discussed in modules 17 and 18. A completely new or different approach could be based on reduction to lower dimensionality where the wave function psi that depends on the coordinates r1 to rn is a function of 3n variables, the expectation value of an operator a, which is given by psi times a times psi, can be calculated from other derived quantities that depend on less number of variables, especially if the operator a is a sum of one or two particle operators as is the case for the Hamiltonian describing the many electron system. Considering the case of nuclear electron potential energy which consists of only one particle terms, one can write the integral psi star summation over i vi times psi integrated over r1 to rn and this integral, one uses this property that V of R1 is equal to V of R2 equal to V of Rn. So this summation can be basically replaced by N times V of R1. One can then write the above integral in the form, which is shown in the second line, is N integral dr1 Vr1 integral psi star psi but now integrated over R2 till Rn. This would lead to the result or the expression for Vne as given by integral dr Vr rho r, where we have introduced now this single particle density rho r, which is defined as rho r1 equal to n integral psi star psi integrated from R2 to Rn, therefore the rho which is depending on R1 is, doesn't appear here because it depends on R1 while the integration has been done from R2 to Rn. This is valid for any single particle multiplicative operator. Similarly, for two particle multiplicative Applicative operators such as the electron-electron repulsion, one can write the potential VEE which is given by psi times half of summation over ij 1 over rij times psi is equal to half of integral over dr1 dr2 and we have introduced now another kind of density given by capital gamma 2 that depends on coordinates R1 and R2 divided by R12, which is nothing but R1 minus R2. The two particle density, which is given by this capital gamma 2, is defined as following. It is 
capital N, the number of electron times N minus 1, integral chi star chi, but now integrated over R3 until Rn. The single and two particle densities, which are termed in general as deduced density functions, can also be expressed as expectation values of the corresponding density operator. So one should have then rho of r is equal to chi times summation over i delta r minus ri times chi. And similarly, one can write the capital gamma 2, which depends on the coordinates r1 and r2, as chi times summation i not equal to j delta r1 minus rj times delta r2 minus rj times chi. For the kinetic energy term, which involves differential apparatus, one can write this expression for the kinetic energy as minus uh, chi times half of summation over i del i squared times chi. Now using again the same property as we have done before, that this operator delta i, it is delta 1 is equal to delta 2, equal to delta 3, and so on. One can therefore write this uh, matrix as in the following way. It's given by minus half times capital N integral chi star delta 1 square times chi integrated from R1 to Rn. Now one can actually take this delta one square in front of the chi star and write the whole thing as delta one square which is operated on chi star chi and replacing the coordinate r1 here by r1 prime and then evaluate this entire quantity at r1 equal to r1 prime and integrate it from r1 till rn. Then in a concise way one can write this above as minus half integral uh, dr1 and then the quantity del1 square and we introduce a new uh, density which is shown as little gamma and that depends on r1 and r1 prime and this entire thing is evaluated at r1 equal to r1 prime. This little gamma is the first order reduced density matrix which is defined in the following way. So we have introduced three different reduced density matrices, which are given by rho, this capital gamma 2, and this little gamma. And they obey various relation among themselves. For example, rho of r1 is equal to little gamma r1 r1. And if you integrate rho of r1 over r1, what one gets is the total number of electron n. Similarly, one can take this uh, capital gamma 2 and integrate over r1 and r2. That gives rise to n times n minus 1. One can take this little gamma and interchange this coordinate r1 and r1 prime. And that is equal to gamma provided it is complex conjugated. Similarly, rho r1, one can show very easily, is equal to 1 over n minus 1 integral capital gamma 2, which depends on the coordinates r1 and r2, integrated over dr2. For the spin polarized case, one has to include the spin dependence, as is given here. For example, one has rho of x1, which is basically including both space and spin part is rho of r1 s1 where s denotes the spin component and r denotes the space component. So the integral over dx is nothing but a summation over spin and integration over space. So one can derive this d, uh, rho of r1 is integrating or summing d a row of x1 over the spin part. So the total charge density rho of r is summation or the addition of this row 
in the spin up channel and rho in the spin down channel one can also define the magnetization density which is given here by this index s that depends on the coordinate r which can be obtained by taking the difference of this charge density in the spin up channel and in the spin down channel the total energy can thus be expressed in terms of reduced density matrices namely rho this capital gamma 2 and little gamma in this following fashion where the kinetic energy term the capital t that is a functional of this little gamma where the v n e that is a functional of rho v e e is a functional of capital gamma 2 and v n n is a constant term this leads to the possibility of developing approach in reduced space in terms of the reduced density matrices namely this rho capital gamma 2 and little gamma by passing the need of using the wave function let us now discuss the n representability condition one of the important requirements in developing methods based on reduced density matrices is the possibility of direct determination of reduced density matrix by minimizing the energy with respect to the reduced density matrix for which the effect of pauli exclusion principle is built in thus the existence of an antisymmetric wave function from which the reduced density matrices can be obtained has to be assured this whole thing is called the n representability problem which needs to be solved by imposing necessary and sufficient conditions such conditions for little gamma and the capital gamma 2 are unfortunately not yet known however it is known for rho and is given by this following two condition that if you integrate rho r over dr that gives you the total number of electron n and rho is a positive definite quantity advantages of using rho as basic variable as summarized below and as also mentioned while giving the brief introduction are a number of them firstly it's a function in 3d space in which we live and perceive Secondly it's simpler to tabulate and plot thirdly it provides a better visualization and finally and most importantly it's an experimentally observable quantity this enables one to compare the calculated results directly with experiments to use the density as basic variable one however needs to assure the following First of all the density should contain sufficient information calculation of the properties and the energy should be possible from the density alone and also it should be possible to develop a method for direct calculation of density with this above background let us now discuss the hartree fock theory the density based theory let us start with the history the possibility of a density description of many electron system has been explored by many people leading to the so called density functional theory which we will often often abbreviate as dft the first density functional theory was due to thomas and fermi method existed since 1927 the thomas fermi model named after thomas and fermi provides the description of electronic structure of many electron system it was developed semi classically shortly after the introduction of the schrodinger equation as opposed to the wave function based methods the formulation was done entirely in terms of electronic density and is viewed as a precursor to the modern density functional theory thomas who the photograph was shown in the left was born in the year 
1903 and he died in the year 1992. He was a British physicist and applied mathematician. He was born in London, studied in, at Cambridge and he died in North Carolina. Enrico Fermi, on the other hand, as was shown in the picture, was born in the year 1901. He passed away in the year 1954, was an Italian physicist, and as mentioned while giving the introduction, created the world's first nuclear reactor. Fermi is considered, as you may, some of you may know, as architect of nuclear age and father of the atomic bomb. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work on artificial radioactivity produced by neutrons and for nuclear reactions brought about by slow neutrons. Let us first discuss the formulation of Thomas Fermi method. The Thomas Fermi approach is a semi-classical approach in the sense that certain ideas were borrowed for the, from quantum mechanics, but otherwise one operates with normal functions instead of quantum mechanical operators. The condition for semi-classical approach to be applicable is that the spatial variations of a de Broglie wavelength in a system in question must be small. Specifically, the momentum P is considered as a spatial function instead of a quantum mechanical operator. And the wave number is introduced, which is given by k of x equal to 1 over h cut px. As you can see that this wave number k is a function of spatial coordinate x. The de Broglie wavelength lambda is then given by lambda, which is a function of x, equal to 1 over kx. The condition for the semi-classical approach to be valid then reads as xi, which is given by, is the modulus of the variation of the de Broglie wavelength as a function of the spatial coordinate x. This variation is much, much less than 1. In Thomas Fermi, one retains only two elements from quantum mechanics. Firstly, the Fermi statistics. All the states up to those with some maximum energy and hence the momentum which is given as P of F, that's the Fermi momentum, which may vary over space as we have discussed in the previous slide, are occupied. Secondly is the uncertainty principle. Every cell in the phase space of volume H cube may host up to two electrons with opposite spin directions. The expression that we will discuss in the following slide have been derived based on the above conditions. The total energy of a system within the Thomas Fermi theory, which is based on the assumption that electronic density rho is the central variable rather than the wave function is given by this Thomas Fermi energy functional which will denote as ETF and that depends on the density. The square bracket here indicate the argument of the functional which in this case is the density. The Thomas Fermi energy functional is composed of three terms as is shown here which is given by a k integral rho 5 by 3 uh, integrated over dr. The second term which is given by integral rho r v external that depends on r integrated over dr. And the last term which is given by half integral rho r rho r prime divided by r minus r prime integrated over dr and dr prime. The first term here is the electronic kinetic energy associated with a system of non-interacting electrons in a homogeneous electron gas. This form can be obtained 
This expression for this electronic kinetic energy can be obtained by integrating the kinetic energy density of a homogeneous electron gas which is given by this expression T0. So then this TTF which means the Thomas Fermi kinetic energy functional is given by integrating this T0 over the space coordinate dr. T0 can be obtained by summing all of the free electron energy states which is given by p squared by 2 since the electronic mass is set to 1 up to the Fermi wave vector which as was introduced in the previous slide is denoted with this notation pf and this is given by for a free electron homogeneous electron gas system as we have learned before 3 pi square rho to the power one third. Therefore, the expression for T0 is given by 2 divided by 2 pi to the power 3 integral p square by 2 np integrated over dp. The np is the density of allowed states in the reciprocal space and it is given by 4 pi p square the volume V times 2 divided by H cube. Therefore, this putting this in the place of NP, one can get this following thing which is now integrated until P of F. And these leads basically giving us the expression for the coefficient AK which was there in the previous slide as 3 by 10, 3 pi square to the power 2 third. The second term in this Thomas Fermi energy functional is the classical electrostatic energy of the attraction between the nuclei and the electron, where V external in that expression is the static Coulomb potential arising from the nuclei, which is given by this following expression, which is minus summation over all this nuclei, Z divided by where Z is the nuclear charge divided by small r minus capital R where small r denotes the coordinate of the electron and capital R denotes the coordinate of the nuclei. Finally, the third term in the energy functional represents the electron-electron interactions of the system and is approximated by the classical Coulomb repulsion between electrons all known as the Hartree energy. To obtain the ground state density and energy of a system, the Thomas Fermi equation must be minimized subject to the constraint that the number of electrons is conserved. This type of constraint minimization problem, as you have learned while discussing both Hartree and Hartree Fock methods, can be solved using the language and the technique of Lagrange multipliers. In general, the minimization of a functional f, which is a functional of this little f, subject to the constraint that which is given by c, which is a functional of this little f, leads to the stationary condition, which is shown here. Here, mu is a constant, which is known as the Lagrange multiplier. This minimization leads to the solution of the corresponding Euler equation as is shown here. Applying this general formulation for the Thomas Fermi problem leads to the stationary condition which is given by this variation delta of this energy functional, Thomas Fermi energy functional minus this constraint which is the product of this Lagrange multiplier mu times this constraint which in this case is integral uh, rho dr minus n because this whole thing should be equal to 0 and this entire variation is then equal to 0. This yields the so called Thomas Fermi equations which is given by 5 by 3 a k rho to the power 2 third plus v external plus integral rho r divided by r minus r prime times dr prime minus mu equal to zero. This above equation can be solved directly to obtain the ground state density. 
we now point to the shortcomings of Thomas Fermi theory. There are few. First of them is it does not predict bonding between atoms. So molecules and solids cannot form in this theory. Secondly, the kinetic energy is approximated in a crude way. The kinetic energy, as you may know, represents a substantial portion of the total energy of a system. And thus, even small errors turn out to be important. Thirdly, is the oversimplified description of the electron-electron interactions, which are treated classically and so do not take into account of the quantum phenomena such as the exchange interaction. Lastly, the correlation effect is neglected completely. Nevertheless, the Thomas Fermi theory contains all the necessary ingredients which pave the way to the modern density functional theory that will be discussed in the next module. To summarize, the challenges in solving quantum mechanical description of many electron systems has been discussed. The problems with numerical solution has been discussed. As an alternative approach, methods based on reduced density metrics were introduced. The requirement of the n representability condition leads to the single particle density as the most suitable choice for the formulation of the alternative approach as we have discussed. The initial theory based on single particle density, namely Thomas Fermi method has been discussed together with its shortcomings. Thank you for your attention.